Well, Crossroads, it's wonderful to worship together, to start out this day together. Uh, some of us are shy about singing at home, but there's something about music that opens our hearts to the Lord, and we pray that that's actually what happens to each of us, whatever our experience is at home. Now, those of you that have, have joined us since, since that song started, we just want to welcome you. We want to be able to say um, that we're happy that you're here. We hope that you'll uh, figure out if you're new that there's a two different views. In the upper right hand corner of your Zoom, you can be on a gallery view or speaker view, which does help you to uh, be able to see those song lyrics or from the app. Now, I need to be kind of clear about some transitions that Crossroads is, is um, actually embracing going forward. We're trying to, in these seasons, to be adding everything we can add to bring our community together, to resource each other, to invite each other to next steps. But we're trying to do it as, as safe a way as possible and within a within the, uh, the comfort and the process of the volunteers that need to be putting a lot of effort into how we do our gatherings. And we're actually happy to say in the summer, we've been able to add real life uh, worship together. We've been able to add children's uh, activities together. What's happening now is that we're being able to add more in real life contact. We're going to try meeting indoors in as safe a way as we can. So what's going to happen is next week, we've got family service. That's going to be outdoors, family service, picnic. We haven't gotten all the parents and kids together in a really long time. So we're looking forward to that. It's youth kickoff. So that's going to happen in the morning for the first time in a long time. We're, we're starting to gather at 11 o'clock, which is a bit later to give everybody plenty of time to prepare. If you just keep track of, of the newsletter that comes, you'll hear all the exact news. But the reason I'm being clear about this is that next week, if you're a Zoom person and you're not coming to the family service, you're going to need to be here half an hour earlier. Okay. I'm going to be here half an hour earlier at 10 o'clock and we, yeah, Bob too, we're coming from a long way. You can, you can manage to come half an hour earlier too, I'm sure. And, and so we're making room for both the digital contact, but more in real life contact as we go forward. And we just hope that you'll just keep tracking with us. Those of you that are able to come uh, join us in real life, we just warmly welcome you. Those who still need to join us digitally, we hope that the welcome will continue to be just as warm in this place as it always has been. Now, starting September 19th, we're kind of a transition Sundays, starting September 19th, our hope is to have digital Zoom church at 10 and an in real life gathering with uh, kids and youth activities at 11 here in San Felipe, Galatia. As you see, Bob and I are sitting here in San Felipe, Galatia today and uh, we're kind of launching our early uh, migration to The Hague every, uh, every Sunday at an earlier time. So I hope that you will not just um, be an observer in this time, but you'll pray for us that we won't be standing still or trying to keep from um, losing ground, but that we would be responding to God's spirit in a new way as a community. We'd make room for the things that are important to God in a new way, reset our priorities according to God's priorities in new ways, and that we would, yeah, our journeys together would be um, full of revived, uh, revitalized energy together in a sustainable way going forward. We want to be that resilient community that keeps the main thing the main thing, that keeps our, our energy coming from God, and that's our joy. Now, one of the things we talk about as a community, that we're next step community. We're looking to take our next steps toward Jesus, toward each other in relationship with each other, but not ignoring the steps we need to take in reaching out to bring God's love to the world around us. We love to take the opportunity when those in our congregation are serving in ways that are unique. We enjoy having that opportunity to hear from them. We've invited Alinda 
Alinda LaMonica, there you are. We're, we've invited Alinda to join us. We've heard from Alinda a number of times along her journey. She's, of course, a very long-term crossroader and is somebody who understands that vision for bringing the love of Jesus to the world. She has a new job and new opportunities that she wants to invite us into in being God's people in the area of caring for refugees, displaced people. And yeah, Alinda, I'd just like to welcome you. I'd just like you to tell us just a little bit about what's up with you and maybe some ways that we can be involved. Yes, thanks so much, Miriam. Um, good morning, everyone at Crossroads. Uh, it's good to see your faces. And um, yeah, so Miriam asked me to share uh, a bit about the work uh, that I'm uh, involved with right now. Um, I actually just um, came back from a Bible school a couple months ago, as some of you might know, um, which uh, has been such like a life-changing experience. And um, actually within a month of coming back, I uh, found a job and um, yeah, I just see, um, yeah, really God's faithfulness in that. Um, I feel like the last year, he's really put my, put the refugee theme uh, on my heart um, throughout my studies. Um, and now he actually, yeah, provided a job for me at the Refugee Foundation uh, for the Dutchies. It's at Stichting Vluchteling. Um, and I've been working there now for the last two months about um, in their communication team, um, mostly focusing on events. And uh, I will share a little bit about uh, that later. Um, but I thought maybe for the people who are not so familiar with, uh, with the work this organization does, they're really an emergency aid um, organization. Whenever there's an emergency, um, uh, anywhere worldwide, uh, they um, yeah, provide direct uh, help um, to the people affected. Um, and of course, with a specific uh, focus on refugees. Um, yeah, they're, um, they respond to the world's uh, worst humanitarian crisis with emergency aid. So like shelter, medical care, food, um, clean drinking water, uh, all of those things. Um, yeah, and now as, uh, as many of you probably um, know, the world's eyes are really on the crisis in Afghanistan. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that um, breaks your heart um, as well to see uh, the situation there. Um, and um, yeah, you can just feel so, or I can sometimes feel so helpless watching it. And uh, it's been such a good learning experience to be in this organization as this crisis kind of evol evolves. Um, and it's really encouraging to see how um, quickly they kind of, um, yeah, were on their feet and uh, on the ground in Afghanistan. Uh, the Refugee Foundation actually has partners there uh, already that they're working with for, for years. Um, which really allowed them to, to act fast now in this, uh, in this crisis. Um, yeah, there is, um, there's a great need there and uh, violence is escalating. There's about uh, 3.5 million Afghans fleeing within the country itself. Um, and another like 2.6 million who have actually left uh, or fled the country. Uh, and about 90% of those like go to neighboring countries, like uh, mostly uh, Pakistan and Iran. Um, yeah, they take in about 90% of these refugees. So um, yeah, what, what uh, the Refugee Foundation is doing is that they have already some help projects in the Southern states um, or in the Southern provinces, uh, mainly Kandahar and Zabul. I have to look at my notes sometimes for these, uh, <laughs> for these specifics. Um, and they mostly provide medical and psychosocial help. Uh, and they've also been trying to um, start uh, helping in Kabul itself, uh, mainly focusing on families who are fleeing. Um, and they provide them with cash, cash help so they can provide in their uh, basic needs themselves. Um, but it's a really challenging situation. Um, many NGOs are talking with the Taliban right now, negotiating if they can still continue to provide help 
up till now that seems to be the case, but yeah, it changes daily. And um, yeah, so I think it's really important to, um, yeah, pray that these help efforts can also also continue and reach the, reach the people um, of Afghanistan. Um, maybe a little more on what I'm doing specifically. Uh, so I'm in the events team uh, at uh, the Refugee Foundation. And one of the bigger events that's coming up is the Night of the Refugee. Um, and that is organized in six big cities in the Netherlands. Um, and that means that during that night, it's 11 and 12 September, um, thousands of people are actually gonna walk through the night, 40 kilometers uh, in the dark. Um, to kind of raise awareness in a positive way for the refugee situation um, and to raise funds as well uh, for our uh, emergency aid. Um, and one of the walks is actually also in The Hague. Uh, so you might catch a glimpse of that. Um, it's been challenging to organize this in Corona times, but we're really happy to see that it's, it's coming together. Um, and it's so cool that so many people are doing this walk. 40 kilometers is really uh, very far. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's really cool that people are involved in this. And um, actually the money that's collected during this night, um, it goes into like a little emergency aid jar. Um, and whenever an emergency anywhere worldwide pops up, uh, that allows us to kind of act on it quickly. Um, for example, last year, that was uh, the fire in Moria. Uh, Crossroads also did a, um, got involved in, in providing some help there. Um, yeah, so this year, we're not sure where the money uh, will be invested. After the night, we see where the need is the highest and then uh, the money will go there. But the chance is very high that it will be, um, go towards, at least part of it will go towards Afghanistan as well. So, um, yeah, that is coming up. And a fun fact, um, someone who's also walking the night is my dad. <laughs> uh, he um, is training. <laughs> I don't know if he made 40 kilometers yet. Um, he bought his new walking shoes. Uh, so he is um, yeah, preparing to, to walk through the night in, in two weeks. And um, yeah, we just kind of wanted to uh, present that opportunity to to Crossroads as a community as well to um, yeah maybe use this possibility to um, make a small difference um, encourage my dad <laughs> for the 40 kilometers um, yeah so if you feel um, call it all to give um, I will uh, put the link to his donation page in the in the chat in a little bit and um, yeah, let's uh, together kind of keep keep looking for ways how to uh, make this world, um, yeah, a little bit of a better place, um, especially when the the needs seem to be so high. So um, yeah, thank you all for for listening. I think that was it for me. And uh, yeah, you'll see the the link in the chat soon. Thank you so much, Alinda. We've enjoyed seeing your life take you to those places of, of making a difference when you can. We know that we can't do everything, but one of the things we can do as a congregation is pray together. And in, in a little bit, we've asked Ghana Camille to pray for both the community requests, but also for the, the plight of the refugees and the people who weren't able to get get out of Afghanistan in this in this uh, troubled season, including a bunch of Christians uh, who are, are uh, you know, in, in huge transitions because of this, uh, this suffering. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. We uh, are pleased to be able to have increased the level of prayer in Crossroads in this season. I just wanted to, to mention that we're meeting in the afternoon still for two more seasons, uh, two more Sundays. If you would be uh, in need of prayer, you'd like to have prayer in person, please just do come and join this afternoon or next afternoon, and we'll be having the opportunity for prayer in person 
as well. And if you'd like to pray together for the refugee situation, situation in Afghanistan, there'd be those of us who'd be willing to stand by to pray together. So let's gather our prayer requests in the chat, spend a few minutes with that, pray as, as requests come in, and then Anna Camille will gather all of these together and lead us. morning crossroads let's play pray um, dear god um thank you lord for this morning thank you that we can gather together lord to celebrate you and to lift your name lord we worship you we adore you lord you are our savior lord our redeemer and our abba father lord um as a follow-up on um, what alinda just shared we keep praying for afghanistan um for the afghanistan situation Lord, we pray for wisdom for the current leaders, current governments, but also future leaders and governments, Lord. Um, I pray, um, Lord, for wisdom, Lord, irresistible wisdom, Lord. I pray, Lord, um, for a renewal, Lord, of their thinking, Lord, um, that your authority will prevail, Lord, in their minds and in their hearts, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that... Um, um, that, that even the situation is as it is, and we don't have all the answers, and we don't know why the situation is as it is, Lord. Let's not that not keep us from praying for um, our sisters and brothers, for these leaders, Lord. Um, also, Lord, I pray that what has been built, like, uh, for instance, the education systems, Lord, the opportunities for women and children, Lord, that these will remain lord i pray this in the name of jesus christ and um lord um i pray also that we will not only look at the situation but also engage in it lord remind us that we too can be 
um, active, Lord. Um, and um, even by prayer, Lord, some, some of us can donate financially, but, but for some who can't, Lord, that we can still be active, Lord, by praying, Lord, by seeking your wisdom, Lord, as, as what we need to pray for exactly, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that this is something that you choose to do together with us, Lord. Um, and knowing why we do this, that you are a holy God, you are a righteous God, Lord. Um, there are people dying, Lord. We hope and pray, Lord, that they will find you, Lord, and, and accept you, Lord. Um, and also families, Lord, I pray for your, your peace that, that, that surpasses, Lord, our own thinking, Lord. I pray that these families will receive support, Lord. Um, I pray, Lord, that these people, these families or people, Lord, um, um, that they will be in, encouraged by you in little ways and obvious way, um, uh, God, it, it, while they're, they're in this situation, God. And um, yeah, I also want to thank you for initiatives such as um, the Nacht van de Vluchteling um, and, and all the other initiatives that help the res refugees, Lord, and people in, in the situation. Um, Lord, the Nacht van de Vluchteling, I pray that it will be a, a successful event, Lord, um, um, that it will receive the necessary donations to be able to provide the right support to uh, refugees, Lord, and the doctors and the people involved. Um, Lord, we ask you to also bless and keep motivating um, the people that participate. Um, and yeah, we're grateful for people like uh, Alinda and Jack, Lord. We pray for more people like this, Lord. Um, and um, yeah, the fire, Lord, within us, Lord, to, to, to want to help, Lord, as a crossroads community, Lord. Um, that, yeah, that your Holy Spirit will, will persuade us, will um, remind us on that, God. And um, it is also this, these kind of organizations and people, Lord, that give support and dedicate their time and energy that, that is encouraging, Lord, even though we see the different situations, not only Afghanistan, but also Haiti and also the floods that we had, Lord. It is these kind of um, initiatives, Lord, that, that bring hope, Lord, and that are an, an encouragement, Lord. And I would like to thank you for that, Lord, because you, you make that possible, Lord. Um, so continue to touch our hearts and, um, yeah, remind us, Lord, to, to look at the needs of others as well through your eyes, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for, for those opportunities and that as a community, we can do that together with you. Um, and Lord, for the people within the Crossroads community or closer around us, Lord, thank you, God, that you are also in their lives, Lord, or in our lives, Lord. Um, some of us are mourning. Um, some recovering, some, some need healing, Lord. Um, others are still undergoing treatments, Lord. Um, I pray, Lord, that you continue to encourage them, Lord. Um, Lord, we pray that they all also receive the right on hand support, um, that they know they are not alone, that your comfort and peace will continue to overflow in their lives, Lord, and, and the ones who are uh, helping them, Lord. Um, and Lord, I also pray pray for a breakthrough for people looking for housing and jobs who need guidance in their studies, Lord, uh, for everyone looking for your guidance in whatever situation they are dealing with, Lord. Um, I saw some prayers for children, Lord, children that maybe, um, yeah, have been affected, um, um, yeah, by, but not only the COVID situation, but maybe um, for the stress, Lord, that has come into their, their families, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your hand is on them, Lord, that your protection is on them, Lord. And I would like to thank you as well for yeah, the, the new school year um, and for the children, for their parents, Lord, for the teachers and the headmasters, Lord. Um, guide the teachers and headmasters to, yeah, to, to, to keep the school safe, Lord. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you that you are with them in this situation. Um, Lord, and um, as we look forward to the coming season, um, thank you that we are opening up carefully. <laughs> um, help leaders and elders, Lord, help us to remain sensitive to your guidance in this, Lord. Um, thank you for the events and opportunities to have fellowship um, that we had during the summer and the ones coming, like the youth brunch family um, gather and uh, the, the youth brunch and the family gathering. Um, I pray that you continue to bless the staff and volunteers that made this all possible. 
Uh, we pray also for the newcomers and seasoned crossroaders that they all will feel at home um, again uh, once we meet again as, at Soundfleet. And um, yeah, um, thank you for this day. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you for the word that will be shared by Sasi, um, that it will touch each of us. Um, I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Anna Camille. Uh, good morning, Crossroads. My name is um, Sassi Bene, and uh, I'm a member of the teaching team here at Crossroads. And it has been a long time since uh, I've been here speaking um, in uh, church. Um, as the schools got out, uh, me and my family, we packed up and we went on a holiday. We went um, on a holiday and we went all the way to Romania to visit uh, my parents. And along the way, we camped and we uh, we lived in a tent and we really enjoyed that and one of the things i've discovered um, in camping is that it was really good to be away from the city to be away from all that the city wants from us in all the ways that the city expects us to be and to think in a certain way to dress in a certain way to speak in a certain way or to have everything that you uh, or, or to have or to measure everything uh, to what the city has to offer and just to be away and live in a tent and hear the rain uh, falling just outside it was really a good time to be away now during the summer here at crossroads um, we have been reading through um, the wisdom literature in the bible the bible has uh, quite a large portion of the bible is wisdom literature and um, we have been thinking through uh, just real life wisdom, how to live well, how to work well, um, about relationships, about um, spheres of, um, of, of, of influence. And one of the things that becomes clear is that the one who finds wisdom finds God himself. Where there is wisdom, there is God himself. Now, the Jewish people in the Old Testament, they have many ways to speak about God, to locate God in their lives. And they would say that God is there where his spirit is, or God is there where his word is. And one of the ways that the Jewish people would be speaking about the presence of God in their lives and in their midst was to say that there where there is wisdom, where they, they, they could see a wise leader or where they could find wisdom for their own lives, that's where God was. You see, the Bible is very clear about what wisdom is. Wisdom is not just a dry theory. It's not just a matter of principles or, or just this kind of abstract thinking. But wisdom is very much found in the midst of life. It is found in the concrete life situations that we live in. Wisdom is found in our passions, in our love, in our work, in our sickness, in our well-being. Wisdom is found on a rainy day and under the blue sky of a warm country. Wisdom is found on a hospital bed or even walking 40 kilometers or driving around in a car. Wisdom is found in the everyday life, in our everyday lives. You see, in the Bible, and the Bible is teaching us, the word of God is teaching us that wisdom grows in the midst of our very concrete everyday lives. As our everyday lives and as our lived reality enters into prayerful uh, conversation with God, that's where you find wisdom. Where God speaks, there are wise words. Where God speaks, there is wisdom. So as we take our next step, in this uh, part of our, um, of our uh, service. Let us listen then to the words of God. Let us listen to the words that God is speaking into our lives. And as we listen, let us hear the wisdom that he has for us. Before we read the word of God, let me just say a short word of prayer. Lord, as we further are committed to hear your wisdom, to hear your word being spoken into our lives. Father, we pray that you open our ears, that you open our 
eyes, that you open our hearts and our lives for us to be able to receive your words, to receive you and to receive your wisdom into our lives. We pray this in your name, in the name of your incarnate word, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I will be reading a very well-known portion of the Bible in the New Testament. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That's one of the letters that Paul wrote to a Greek church in Corinth in the first century. And I'm going to be reading from the first chapter, from verse 18 until the end of the chapter. Now, if you have an app with you, you can uh, uh, open the app and on the church app, there will be the passage. Or maybe you have one of those classic things, those really old fashioned things, a real book or a real Bible with you. So open and follow along. If not, just in a very attentive or in a very meditative way, just listen to these words. Listen to the word of God. For the word of the cross is folly, is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thaw. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were noble by birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of God. Now, this is one of those wonderful passages in the New Testament. It is a wonderful way of explaining how the wisdom of God actually works in this world. Now, you see, at the heart of the gospel, at the heart of the, the good news that we preach, at the heart of the preaching and the message of the church, and not only of our own church crossroads, but the church of all ages, at the heart of the gospel, at the heart of the message, at the heart of the good news, is nothing else but the cross of Christ. It is that that we are committed our lives to. It is that that we preach. We preach Christ and him crucified. It is there where the wisdom of God is found in this world. It's not a secret. It's not a secret knowledge that only a few people are allowed to know. But this is the kind of knowledge that is at the center of history. It is at the center of our everyday lives. This is the kind of wisdom that is not just, as I said before, it's not just a theory. It's not just a matter of principle. But this is wisdom that is embodied, that is lived, that has become a human being, has become a person in the life of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And not only that, but on the cross, we see it on its full display. That is where the wisdom of God hangs. That's where you are confronted 
with what it is to be God in this world. You see, there are two kinds of people who are seeking for God. And Paul makes it clear that there are those people who are religious and are always looking for miraculous signs. They are looking for God to prove himself through miracles, to signs and wonders. And then he says that there are those people who are seeking for God and they are seeking for God to prove himself through sophisticated, philosophical, or even scientific knowledge. In one way, you can say that God is truly God or only he can be only God when he can really prove himself, when he can really show himself to be a, the one who does miracles, who does things that are out of the ordinary, things that no one can explain. And when things like that happen, then we can label that as an act of God. And there are those people who say that true, that God is only truly God when he comes or when he speaks or when people speak about him in truly sophisticated philosophical words. And Paul says, scripture tells us that actually when both are seeking for God, they are ultimately are disappointed. That God in Jesus Christ becomes a letdown, becomes a disappointment. Because all that God has to offer as a proof of who he is in this world and how he is in this world is none other than the cross of Jesus Christ. For those who, un for those who understand God to be somebody who does signs and miracles and wonders, the cross of Christ is a big disappointment. For those who are looking for God to be some kind of sophisticated uh, scientific and scientifically responsible and philosophical proof of who God is. The cross of Christ is foolishness. And they would rather, and those who follow after a God like that are fools themselves. Now there's this famous graffiti from the second century. It is a graffiti that you can find today in Italy in one of the churches and it is one of the earliest graffitis that has been produced thank you Ari for um, highlighting it uh, uh, for us now this is a graffiti that depicts Jesus with a donkey's head and he is on a cross and you see that there is a person who is looking up to him who is worshiping and there is this Greek sentence on it and the, the Greek sentence reads Alexamenos worships his God. Now for a sophisticated city dweller, somebody who is educated in the philosophy of the day, somebody who lives on the highway on his life, seeing a Christian worshiping a God who is crucified on a Roman cross is none other than a big foolishness. You see, us being believers in Jesus Christ, us being believers in Jesus Christ and him crucified, it puts us in a place where we seem to be foolish people because we have surrendered our lives to none other than Jesus Christ and him crucified. Thank you, Ari, for highlighting this, um, this um, uh, image. You see, nothing much has changed since the first or the second century up until today. Being a Christian, it feels like that it is foolish in these days. Being a Christian and following after Christ seems foolish. And then Paul says that consider the foolish things of this world, because it seems like that this is how God works in this world, that actually he has called those who are weak, those who are foolish, those who are low, those who are nobody or nothing in this world, in order to shame the wise, in order to shame the strong and the powerful, in order to do away the things that are, and that are not, in order to prove himself to be 
God in and through the lives of those who are foolish, those who are weak, those who are low, those who are nobodies in this world. There's something about God and him living in and through or presenting or revealing himself in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that, that looks really foolish in this world. You see, when we believe in the gospel of a crucified savior, we live in a very different world. You see, we live in the world where people who are weak, who have nothing to offer, people who are low and despised, people who, are, who seem to be foolish, are the ones who matter the most, actually. And then, furthermore, Paul is encouraging the church to actually consider all that they have in Jesus Christ. You see, believing in him and being in Jesus, having your life hidden in him, you receive everything that you have. You receive wisdom from God, right way of thinking and of living. You receive righteousness, a right standing with God. You receive sanctification, a clean slate, a fresh start with God himself. Everything that we have as a church, everything that we have as Christians, everything that we are in this world is what we have received in and through the gospel, in and through Jesus Christ. And everything that then what is left is not chest beating, is not showing that through ambition somehow we are able to tame this wild life and this world that we live in. But all that it remains is actually hands lifted up high in praise and in prayer to none other than God himself, to none other than the one who created the world and the one who is redeeming our lives in this world. And what is left then to consider actually is how then to live wise lives. How it is then to live in this world, this world that is so complicated, this world that is so difficult, that one new cycle taking over the other one. When we are able to contemplate the sufferings of this world, how then we should be able to live wise lives. And when I just concentrate on myself, whenever just I consider my own life, what I discover that I'm more often than not just foolish. Foolish in the, in the narrow sense of the world, of the world. Because on the one hand, I can comprehend, I can understand this theological truth. I can understand Christ and all that he has to offer. But oftentimes I park it into this little box in my life, which is religion. And that is parked there and I visit that once in a while. And then I have my life, the way I live my life. And for that, I'm looking for a philosophy. I'm looking for a theory. I'm looking somewhere for a life philosophy that allows me to actually get on with my life. Thinking that this religious part of my life has nothing to do with this life philosophy that I'm looking for. And the foolishness in it is to discover that actually everything that Christ is, everything that I have in him is actually enough for the very concrete life that I'm living. That's where the foolishness that I discover my own foolishness in my life. That on the one hand, I can pray for the kingdom of God to come, but I'm happy with Haishia Bompiubeishia. Sorry, for those who don't speak Dutch, I'm just happy with probably the most common life philosophy of the ne Netherlands, that you should be just be satisfied with your house, with your tree, and with your little dog that, that you have in your life. Right? That, that's, what, that's what everybody is longing for to have. But I pray for the coming of the kingdom of God. I seek for the kingdom of God. I sing about the kingdom of God. Yet I'm satisfied with everything that this city, that this world, that this country, this culture has to offer. My prayer this Sunday morning is 
that I may find that the wisdom of God in Jesus Christ and him crucified is indeed enough for my everyday life. That that is enough for me when there is nothing on my bank account. That it is enough for me, that Christ is, is enough for me when I'm thinking about my career choices, when I'm thinking about my work, when I'm thinking about where should I run, when I'm thinking about how should I spend my time. That, it, that Christ and him crucified. The foolishness of God, the wisdom of God, that that is enough for me for those everyday situations. Now, Crossroads, as we end this portion of our service, there's a song that we can listen to now. And we can listen to meditatively as a way of responding, as a way of just hearing the words of God, not only being spoken to us, but also helping us to, to sing, helping us to, to meditate further on what God has to say. After the song, we will come back I will pronounce the blessing and make some final remarks. Thank you. <laughs>